Hello, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst for CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets on Tuesday, the 19th of April 2016. Be sure to visit tradesignal.com and uh, download the latest app uh, via the Google Play and Apple Store, and uh, you can certainly gain access to my analysis along with others via the app. Okay, and this app will have uh, several future potential products are in the pipeline, and uh, this app certainly will be a good base to uh, build upon. So, certainly download and uh, watch out, watch this space. Okay, now in terms of the markets, uh, I think everybody's perplexed now, everybody's confused, scratching their head. Uh, uh, we've had the FTSE obviously uh, hit a, a intraday high or intraday, intra morning high, shall we say, at 6420, almost 6418, and everybody sat there scratching their heads thinking, what's happened? Okay. Um, same here, folks. As a trader, that's basically what we are doing. We're all probably frustrated, scratching our heads. Uh, probably a lot of us are probably a revenge trading right now because we, we're obviously getting squeezed out on our shorts. Monday morning, I was up 100. Now I'm uh, I'm actually negative now. So, so at the moment, <clears throat> very very strange. I did not expect the rally on the FTSE. I was certainly stopped out overnight on the Aussie and the FTSE uh, minus 90 points. So. Very impressive, especially with the Doha meeting, obviously failure, failure for OPEC to agree, etc, etc, etc. And this market continues to rally and uh, certainly uh, uh, confuses everyone. OK, and that's the market, folks. You know, the, the, hence the reason why they say that uh, that the, the market can and can remain irrational, logical, longer than me or you can remain solvent. So the issue here is really not the market. The issue is you and me. Uh, and the issue is obviously good management, good risk management. And uh, don't put your eggs in one basket, as they always say. Okay, very, very simple concept. So uh, control your risk. Uh, money management is absolutely crucial and key in order for longevity and continue to trade for another day, regardless of how stupid the price action, illogical and irrational exuberance, etc. the market can be. And that's basically what we are in. We're currently in that irrational exuberance phase, which usually is a signal of a potential top. Okay, now in terms of the uh, uh, markets, let's uh, let's look at the facts uh, as opposed to our own preconceived judgments. Okay, uh, the Nikkei is up by 3.7%, the Hang Seng up by 1%, the Shanghai more or less is flat, up 0.3%. Okay, so impressive given the fact that obviously we've had the, we've had the earthquakes in Japan and obviously the yen rally. Uh, we did dip below 108 yesterday, we're back up and we've certainly held that 108 level. So. Given the fact that USD JPY is the heart of this market, oil is the heart of this market, and both are certainly holding up well, but, 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 they are now coming into resistance, so watch out below in terms of equities, okay? So I'm still maintaining my bearish stance, and I am, by, by, my bias is bearish, looking for lower prices. Okay, right, let's try and uh, decipher now and understand. Now, one of the factors I think also, uh, the reason why these markets have, have kept afloat, even with the Doha meeting failure, is Mr. Draghi this week, okay? A lot of individuals are potentially expecting some QE from him. So the market certainly seems to be short squeezing based on that. Okay, so again, um, it'll be interesting to uh, observe. Okay, so something that to to, uh, to focus on. Okay. Righty then. Okay, let's let's go. Let's kickstart this uh, uh, analysis and understanding. In terms of results, just bear with me one second. I think I'll miss something here. Where did I just see that then? me okay I'll discuss that afterwards okay for now um, okay let's let's try and understand and decide for this okay right in terms of the market now uh, in terms of economic data uh, today uh, or overnight we had the uh, mr. Rosenberg who was uh, of Rosengren should I say who was actually a uh, hawkish in terms of his uh, comments the RBA minutes and from my understanding, overall, net net dovish. Uh, I can't really see anything that's really uh, overtly hawkish. And uh, given the fact that the uh, Aussie now is touching that 0.78 level, uh, I won't be surprised to see some jawboning. We do have Mr. Uh, Glenn speaking later on, so again, watch out for that. We have the GDT auction, the dairy auction for from New Zealand, so watch out for that as well. Now we've had ZEW and current account. Uh, the current account data this morning certainly came in um, mixed. 
ZEW came in mixed as well. The economic sentiment better than expected, but the current situation certainly worse. And the uh, construction data certainly came out worse out of the eurozone. So that's certainly something to look out look out for. Although having said that, ZEW survey for economic sentiment for the eurozone came out slightly stronger, and that was uh, due to the uh, Chinese markets. Okay. Now we've had uh, we've got U.S. housing stats later on, and uh, BOE Governor Carney speaking as well. So again, that's going to be interesting for the FTSE 100 uh, for those of you trade at FTSE. Uh, now, in terms of the uh, the market from a technical perspective, let's just look at it now. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to start off with the German DAX because the German DAX in the daily chart is into its 200 MA and has pierced that 200 MA. We've taken out that gap fill as well at 10 200. So this is a monster move, a very, very impressive move on the German DAX. So the 200 MA will be the resistance in the interim and that's something to uh, certainly watch out for. Now, again certainly has defied the odds uh, the unfilled gap at 10 700 may well be a target uh, again everything is possible in this market if mr draghi obviously delivers on the qe train and the qe uh, talk okay so that should be interesting to watch the euro usd now the euro usd currently is past that 1.13 level if i bring up the chart the euro usd uh, let's bring up a daily chart first of all okay so the daily chart at the moment certainly has bounced off that 7 fib 75 percent and uh, a, a potential target at 1.15 is certainly on the cards from my perspective, okay? The four-hour chart at the moment, we are retesting that previous support equals resistance. But having said that, the euro, given the fact that the euro is higher along with equities, that relationship certainly isn't as strong as it used to be. So again, uh, the focus certainly seems to be on oil. That certainly is the main focus. And also uh, uh, the USD JPY, that certainly remains a focus in this market as well. Okay, now going over to the uh, bond, euro bonds, should I say? Uh, again, it's important to look at the bonds. Now, the bonds are indicating a potential support, so you are looking at potentially moving higher here. Uh, bonds higher obviously sends the yields lower. Yields lower sends the equity market higher. So again, it certainly is a, a, a mixed bag because you'd expect the bonds to be higher today, given the fact that the uh, German DAX is testing that T10 350 zone. That hasn't been the case. So certainly divergence here uh, all around. So it certainly is a concern. Um, certainly is a concern. It's not the uh, pattern that you'd like to see. Now, on the daily chart at the moment, it is indicating to you folks that the bonds are on their way down. If the bonds are on their way down, given the double top scenario, then that obviously indicates that the euro is on its way up. The euro is on its way up, then that obviously indicates that the uh, equity markets are on their way down. Okay, so there are the several divergences, and that's mainly due to the price of oil. Okay, if I bring up the price of oil in a 60 minute chart and give you a, a, an insight here, you can see that we've closed that gap now, the Doha gap. Okay. That's what we call it, the Doha gap. So the Doha gap uh, certainly gapped down on, on Sunday night and going into Monday. Uh, and that gap has been closed. And that gap will hold given the fact that's obviously uh, the failure in the production freeze. OK, so again, risk off scenario from here. And you are looking at the markets moving lower. Not only uh, do you have a, a, a very strong argument for the markets moving lower from here based on oil, you also have a very strong argument based on the Nasdaq because because the Nasdaq has closed that gap at 4590. And therefore, you are looking at risk off on the Nasdaq. Risk off on the Nasdaq equals risk off in the global markets. Along with the German DAX being into the 200 MA, you are looking at weakness everywhere, from my perspective. Daily chart at the moment, uh, you you certainly are into that horizontal resistance now on the Euro stocks. Okay, so certainly uh, looking at horizontal resistance there. 60 minute chart, you can clearly see horizontal resistance. And therefore, you are looking at weakness on the um, the actual euro stocks. The so French CAC is the same. I'm actually short the French CAC from the 75 level. So looking for uh, weakness here, uh, looking for the market to move lower based on the daily chart is being into resistance. 60 minute chart at the moment on the euro stocks. Yes, you do have a bull flag, but you have that double top scenario. So watch out for that. 10 minute chart certainly is um, overbought. Uh, you have the unfilled gap being the potential target below at 4500. So all eyes in that 4500 zone for the French cat, the unfilled gap, so you will uh, be the key attracting feature for this market. So again, looking for weakness here and looking for a potential move lower, okay? Right, the FTSE 100 now, this has defied all odds. Very, very impressive thrust from the FTSE itself. Daily chart is putting in a topping tail after putting in a bottoming tail yesterday. Again, rejected Doha, etc. Uh, you do have horizontal resistance on the FTSE, hence the reason why we've found weakness here at 6420. Uh, and 60-minute uh, chart, the FTSE now is retesting that breakout level. Again, if we go below that pivot, that key area at 6375, then the next zone below is 6310. That's basically what it opens up in terms of the FTSE 100. Now, the 10-minute chart on the FTSE itself, again, you're retesting previous resistance equals support. Uh, again, the next zone below will be 6365, and then the key support zone will be 6340, 6350. Again, watch out below in terms of the FTSE from my perspective.
The real test will be that unfilled gap at 6340 from my perspective. That's the, that's the uh, or 6240, should I say. So we are looking at further weakness here. Okay, I think that's a wrap, folks, in terms of uh, uh, the European market analysis. Be sure to uh, uh, visit uh, cfds.com, okay, for your trading needs. And certainly take advantage of the, uh, the healthy uh, bonus that's on offer at the moment. Okay, folks, the... Uh, the bonus of up to 25% on uh, all new trading accounts. Terms and conditions apply. On that note, goodbye and uh, wish you the best for the rest of the session. Again, my bias at this current juncture is bearish. Goodbye now.